What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp plugin tutorial for you. So this week we're going to use the extension Profile Builder to build a smart stair rail that'll infill posts as we go. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start off, and uh, you may remember I've done some stuff on Profile Builder before, but basically Profile Builder is an extension that you can buy that uh, allows you to create smart assemblies, so objects that have like components in them, and then also custom extrusions, so you can use it to create like um, complete framed walls, and all sorts of different things in SketchUp. So, and I'll put the link for the 30-day trial up, up in the corner of this video. Please note that is an affiliate link. So if you do like this extension and you end up purchasing through that link, I will receive a small commission. So um, that's just also a great way to support the show. But in any case, let's just go ahead and walk through how to create this. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to model up our corner posts. So the way this is going to work is you're going to come in here and you're going to draw up you're going to draw up the end post for your stair rail. So this is going to be the post that shows up on the corners and um, whenever this rail turns right here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and we're going to model that with the rectangle tool. And we may come back in and add some trim in here a little bit later. For now, I'm just kind of using the push pull tool and the offset tool to come in here and kind of detail this out a little bit. So let's see so I've got this to a general height of about three feet which is about where we'll put our rail I'm gonna go ahead and put this to about three foot six just like this and then we'll come in here and we'll kind of draw in our top piece that's a little more uh, a little more decorative so we'll just come in here use the offset tool to make that a little bit bigger um, we'll make this about four inches tall. Go ahead and fill in this face with the rectangle tool. And then erase these lines in here. Just like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the push pull tool in copy mode just to kind of extrude this up a little bit more. And we'll come in and detail out the trim on this in a little bit. But so this will give us kind of our general corner post shape and so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to make this a component so drag your mouse across this shape just like this right click and click make component and you can just call this end post or corner post or whatever you want to call it so we'll go ahead and we'll create our post right here and so what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to go ahead and use profile builder to build an assembly and so if you remember there's two different kinds of things you can build in profile builder there's a profile and there's an assembly and so a profile is basically something that it extrudes like if i come in here and i use one of the built-in handrail shapes and uh, i just click on this build shape and then I click just like this. Basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna extrude it kind of like if it was using the follow me tool along a face. So that's, that's a profile. And that's something we're gonna use to create kind of our top piece and stuff like that. But for now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna activate this assembler dialog. So you're just gonna click on this assembler dialog and um, we're going to create a new assembly. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to hit that plus button for new assembly. And so what that's going to do is that's going to create a completely new assembly in here. And it's kind of blank right now, so we're going to start adding some stuff into it. And remember, the way this works is you've got the pieces that it's going to extrude like rails. And then it's got the pieces that it's going to put in at a certain spacing, like your corner posts and your picket rails and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here in our assembly. We're going to start off, we're going to add a component. So come in here, click on this component tab, and click the plus. And so what that's going to do is that's going to give you all this stuff down here. And don't be intimidated by all this stuff. It's actually pretty easy to figure out. So the first thing we're going to do, um, now that we have our component, is you're going to select pick from model. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us this little eyedropper right here. And you can see how if you move this over a component, um, it gives you a green check mark. That's basically it saying, okay, you can select this component if you want to. So I'm going to move my mouse over this component just like this, and I'm going to click on it. And you can see how what that does is that selects this component. So, and you can see how now your preview up here gives you different posts just like this. 
And so what we're going to do now is we're going to set the spacing. And so first thing we want to do is we want to uncheck this box that says infill because basically we want this kind of post to only happen at the start point, the end point, and the junctions. So the start point and end point are pretty simple. So come in here and click start and click end. That's basically saying that you want this to put posts at your start point where you click right here and your end point. So between any, any points just like this. So you can see how that's kind of moving this around right now. The other thing we want to check is junctions. And the reason we want junctions is because we want this to put a corner post every time we turn. So like for example, if I come in here and I click three times, just like this, you can see how now it adds a post at my start point, at my end point, and then at this junction right here, so where I turned. So that's the way we want that to go. So make sure that's in here. Um, these three boxes are checked. You do not want infill checked. So now our assembly is basically made up of a whole bunch of posts just like this, which is good. It's a good start. So the next thing we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to draw a profile for our handrail in here. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to start off and I'm just going to draw a little box on here that I can use to kind of detail this out. So basically I'm drawing a four inch by two inch box on this face just like this. So then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna kind of round this off a little bit just to make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna draw a little arc right here, probably about a half inch off this edge. So I'll come in here and I'll draw an arc and one and a half should be fine. And then I'll come in here and I'll draw an arc on the other side just like this as well. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this out um, and I'm going to make a copy using the move tool. I'm going to use the scale tool to flip it and then I'm going to move it back just like this and then I'm going to erase these extra edges just like this and what that should do is that should give me this face for my handrail just like this and you can see how you can kind of extrude this out now and it's got kind of a handrail shape to it um, which is what we want so now that we've drawn kind of our face so this is our profile this is what we're going to extrude along the top of our of our stair just like this and so now what we want to do is we want to come into profile or profile builder and we want to create a profile that we'll save in profile builder based off of this shape so in order to do that what we're going to do is we're going to click on this profile member tab and go ahead and click plus just like this and then what you're going to do once you click plus is you want to come over here and you want to click this button right here that's going to open up your profile builder tab so what you want to do is you want to select this face and then you want to click plus and it's going to ask you to name your profile so in this case we're going to call this handrail and hit OK. And you can see how your flat face now shows up on your preview pane just like this. And so you can come in here and maybe select like bottom middle if you want. I don't like having my uh... so so this point is where it brings this profile into your model. So if I was to add this to my model right now um, when I bring it in wherever I click it's gonna put this red point so it's gonna start this off wherever I click in here. So that's why I put that on the bottom middle. I just like to have something on the edge here that'll lock to your face but anyway go ahead and create your profile name it handrail and if you want to you can go ahead and put it on a different layer or not it really doesn't matter at this point you could also come in here and you could select a material so if I was to come in here and color this up with a material like a wood or something like that uh, like let's say I use this wood veneer just like this and I'll probably have to close out of this and come back in it needs to kind of reload all the stuff but whenever whenever you add a material in here but basically I can tell it to bring this profile in as wood veneer one so now we're telling it okay we want to add a profile to our assembly and we want to bring it in with the wood veneer material and then we're gonna go ahead and click OK and so now you can see what you've got here on the preview is it's got your handrail coming in but it's got it bringing in on the ground so if I zoom out here and I put my profile in just like this you can see how right now it's bringing my handrail in um, at the very bottom of my assembly and so we need to come in here and fix this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off and we're gonna give it an elevation so in this case on this practice one or on this face that we drew over here 
we drew this at three foot seven above the ground. And so what we want to do is we want to tell it in your assembly, bring this piece in at three foot seven off the ground. And you can see how that updated in your uh, in your preview pane right here. In order to update it in this assembly, what you do is you select this assembly and you click this little check check button for apply assembly attributes and you can see what that did that updated this based on our revised elevation so the next thing we need to do is we need to set our uh, left right offset because you can see how it's bringing it in on the edge over here well what we want to do is we basically need to we need to offset this to the side so that it's coming in at the center of this object so all you're going to do is you're going to measure this right here it's see it's three and five eighths so and you're just going to set your left right offset to three and five eighths just like this and you can see by your um, your preview right here that brought this end of the wrong direction and so to change that all you do is you make this negative so now it's centered on this uh, preview up here right here so go ahead and apply this to this object by clicking the checkbox you can see how when I applied the left right offset what it did is it brought this into the left of our insertion point centered on this object right here so you can see how we still have a problem though on this side this lines up pretty close over here but we need to go ahead and set our start and end offsets so basically what we have right now is it's bringing this when it starts this assembly it's starting this handrail um, at wherever your start point was so I clicked on this corner and so it's saying oh I need to start this handrail right above this corner right here what we need to do is we need to offset this a little bit so that it's only bringing it in to the face of our object just like this and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure this it looks like this is about seven and five eighths inches too long and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our start setback to seven and five eighths inches and then we'll go ahead and apply that and you can see how what that did is it took this endpoint and it said, okay, offset this seven and five eighths inches from your corner or from your start point right here. So it's offsetting that now. Basically, we're telling it to start the handrail seven and five eighths inch, seven and five eighths inches from where we started right here. So now this is kind of lined up. And then the other thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to fix our end offset. And so all we're going to do there is we're going to say our end offset needs to be probably going to be negative three-eighths of an inch I'll click that apply button and you can see how what we did here is we basically told it okay when I click here it's the end point or you need to go three-eighths of an inch further than wherever I end my point so now whenever I bring this in my handrail is going to get brought in right so now what it's going to do whenever you add a new object in here like this is it's going to bring in these corner pieces at your junction points and it's going to extrude this top rail along this piece just like this um, and you can see how now we've got that all lined up so it kind of dies into this object right here so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to model our pickets and so we're going to kind of use this rail right here as kind of a guide I just want to create two different kinds of spindle details in here so what we're going to do is we'll start off and we're just going to use this as kind of our base point what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and model one of our spindles as a component. So I'm basically going to bring this down just like this. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to kind of, well, first of all, I'm going to make a copy of this because we're going to model two different kinds of spindles. So I model my first spindle just like this. And then I'm going to make a copy of it over here to work on my second spindle. So all we're going to do now is I'm just going to divide this into a couple different segments so I'm going to divide this into four segments just by right clicking on this line and basically the reason that I'm doing that is because I want this spindle to have a detail up here and down here and then this spindle to just have a detail in the middle just like this and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here I'm gonna hide this and we're just going to model our different we're just going to come in here and we're just going to model our different pieces a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to push pull these out probably a quarter inch in each direction. And you can see how that's just kind of giving me 
So that's just kind of giving me this metal detail piece in here. So once I've done that, I'm going to select this whole thing. I'm going to make a copy of it with the move tool. I'm going to move it up a half inch and then I'm going to make another copy that's down an inch just like this. And so basically what I've got is I've got these three kind of metal pieces in here. So then what I'm going to do is if you remember I divided this this piece right here into a few different segments. I'm just going to make a copy of this and I'm going to move it down. And I want to move it straight down along the blue axis, but I'm just going to use inferencing to kind of center it along that point right here. And so you can see what that did is that came in here and now I've got these two spindle pe or these two metal pieces on the top and on the bottom just like this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to erase out that copy that I made earlier. And I'm going to make a new copy of this right here. And all we're going to do right here is we're going to select this. We're going to make a copy of it so that it lines up with this point. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to delete these out. And by the way, if any of what I'm doing is confusing to you, just leave a comment below and ask me a question. I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have on how to do this. So I'm going to come in here and delete all of this out. Then I'm also going to do the same thing on this upper one over here. And I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to clean these up a little bit. All right, so we're good to go. So now if you come in here and you look at this, now what I have is I have two different, um, so you can see how now what I have is I have two different stair balusters in here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna create, and we're gonna make each one of them into a component. So you know what, and the other thing we may wanna do in here, because I think I'm gonna have these go straight to the ground, is we're actually just going to make these a little bit wider. So, So we're just going to kind of give these a base over here so it looks like they're built to actually sit on the ground. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to select these. We're going to make them a component. So I'm going to call this one baluster one. I'm going to call this one baluster two. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come back in here and work on our assembly some more. Um, and one thing you can do is you can go ahead and come in here and save this. So it's good to have some kind of folder set up where you're keeping all your uh, assemblies that you've built. Um, it won't let you put them in the default profile builder folder, so you have to create your own. So just make sure you create a folder somewhere where you know where that is. But I'm going to go ahead and call this handrail and click save. And I'm just saving that so that in case something goes wrong or whatever that um, I don't lose the work that I've done. But what we're going to do now is we're going to come in here and we're going to add these to our objects. So in this case what we're going to do is remember these are in here as components and we want to put them in here um, as spacing or we want to put these in here at a certain spacing in our rail. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here we're going to click the plus and we're going to add a component. So in this case, we're going to click pick from model, and then we're going to click on baluster one. And so in this case, we do want to make sure that this uh, infill button is checked because we are trying to infill along different spacing in here just like this. And you can see how right now, the way this is drawn in, it's only infilling this rail every eight feet based on this spacing. What we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to type in one foot. And so basically we're telling it we want it to draw, we want it to space this baluster in here and we can call this baluster one. By the way, you can name these in here, but we're basically telling it, okay, whenever you draw this assembly, I want you to put a baluster one component in here at every foot, just like this. But you can see how this is kind of messed up a little bit because it's basically putting one in at your start and your end point as well and you don't want that but since this is in here as infill it's not going to let you uncheck start and end so what we need to do is we need to do this with spacing so basically what we're going to tell it is we're going to tell it okay we want you to start your set start your setback at 12 inches 
and we want your inset back to be 12 inches. So basically what we're telling it is we don't want you to put baluster one into your assembly until 12 inches into your object. So now I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna click update and you can see how now it's not putting a baluster here and here like it was before. So basically we've got our rail in here, we've got um, our balusters and stuff like that. What we wanna do now is we wanna add our second baluster in here with a different spacing. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here, you're gonna do the same thing, you're gonna add a component, you're gonna pick one of these objects, so in this case I'm picking baluster two, and you're gonna tell this that you also want that to come in at 12 inch spacing, just like that. So now if I come in here and I update this, all right, so right now that's bringing that in and it's got the same problem. It's putting one of these in at your start and your end point and uh, it's not uh, putting it in exactly where we want it to go. So what we're gonna do here is instead of setting our start set back to 12 inches, we're gonna set our start set back to 18 inches. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna tell it, okay, this one, we want you to space it at 12 inches, but we want you to wait until 18 inches in instead of 12 inches in to start doing this. So if you come in here and you set this to 18, and you set this to 18 for your start and end setback, and then click apply, you can see how what that's doing in here now is that's bringing that in and that's spacing this in between just like this. So it's putting this every 12 inches starting 18 inches from your start point. The other one, it's putting it in every 12 inches starting from 12 inches from your start point. And so you're getting this kind of offset in here. And you can see how we've got a little bit of an issue here because this spacing isn't exactly right. All right, so one other thing to note when you're doing this um, is right now if you look at this rail, you can tell that this isn't uh, spaced properly. And part of the reason that this isn't spaced properly is because we have this option for max checked. So if you look at this box, basically what it's doing is if you check this box for max, what it's going to do is it's going to try to uh, it's going to try to space this stuff evenly within your object um, based on your start and end point. And so what it's going to do is it's not going to put everything in at exactly one foot spacing. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to try to divide everything across um, the length between these two points. So. And if you don't have this box checked, you can see on this image right here, what that means is you'll probably have, um, you'll probably have a baluster here that's a little different spaced at the very end, but we want that instead of having this in here where these aren't spaced properly. So just come in here and uncheck the max box for both of these components, and then come in here and click that apply button. And then when you do that, you can see how now these are spaced properly in here just like this. So, and the one thing we're gonna wanna change on our second baluster in here, which I forgot to name, so we'll name that one baluster two, is we're gonna set our end setback a little bit differently. So in this case, I'm gonna set my end setback to more like 12 inches and see what that does. Actually, I'm gonna set my end setback to zero on this one, there we go. So basically what we did is on our first baluster, we set our inset back to one. So we're telling it to keep this 12 inches off of here. Um, on the second one, we set our inset back to zero, just like this. So we're telling it anywhere up to this end point, go ahead and put a baluster in here. So now what this will do, and actually we're gonna set our inset back on both of those to zero. There we go. So we can, we can see now if we zoom in here and we look at our preview, Basically what it's doing is it's putting a new baluster in here for every point and you can see how that might get a little problematic if you have anything in here that goes into this corner point right here. So you may need to set your inset back to something like, so we're gonna go ahead and set the inset back on those to one inch. So basically what we're telling it, see if I set this to a half inch that it's gonna put this inside this face. But if I tell it, set this back an inch from this object right here, basically you're gonna tell it, okay, if we're getting within an inch of this endpoint, don't put a spindle over here so that it doesn't put something in here that kind of merges with your geometry just like this. So there's one other thing we need to fix on this real quick. If you look at this right now, these spindle or these balusters are coming in here and they're not offset properly. So they're off by about, 
they're off by about three and an eighth inch on the outside here. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna set the left right offset on these to, it's probably gonna be negative three and one eighth inch, just like this. So we'll come in here and we'll apply that real quick and see if we fixed it, yeah. So basically you're telling it, okay, from your start point, offset this left to right three and an eighth inch so that it's centered on this handrail point right here. So, and then we need to go in here, do that with our other baluster. Negative three and one eighth inch. Negative three and one eighth inch. Apply that, perfect. So now that brings these in here, centered on your handrail. This. So the only thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to, I'm gonna adjust these components in here so that they're colored. So in this case, I'm just gonna select all um, I don't think there's a metal that I really like in here, so we're just going to pick a color. So we'll just pick kind of a darkish grayish, or a dark blackish color in here for these objects. So just come in here and color up your components. And remember, since these are components, um, any instance of these that you come in here and edit, it'll change all of them. So if I was to come in here and color this a different color, it would change on all these different components in here just like this. And we're going to do the same thing with this end piece right here we'll just come in here we'll select a wood texture probably this wood veneer one select all our faces and color that in and so now that'll bring that in um, just like this with that wood veneer texture and you can come in here and you can edit this if you want to make it look a little different so you can just edit the texture size in here so that way this looks a little bit more like wood and a little less like just some brown color they got smeared on here and so now you can come in here you can add kind of trim and detail to these pieces you can kind of do whatever you want and remember since these are in here as components you know anything you do in here you adjust one it's going to adjust all of them just like this so you can come in here and finish detailing this out and stuff like that so now you've got this cool stair rail in here that like for example if you were to draw like a curved line or something like that you could use the build along path option to extrude this along your path and you can see how it spaces that kind of the same way. So you can create like a curved stair rail in here if you want to, or if you needed a rail that just kind of goes around corners, just like this, you could do that as well. All right, so the only other thing we're gonna wanna do in here is we're gonna want to come in here and set our junction setback for one of these objects. So like right now, if I come in here and I do this, you can see how this gets kind of messed up over here on this side because we haven't set our junction setback. So what this is doing right now is if you remember over here, we set an eight, a uh, setback of 18 inches for one of these objects and 12 inches for the other. Well, we didn't set that off of the junctions, right? So this is doing this based off your start point. So the problem is over here, we've got a junction, not a start point. And so all we want to do for that is we want to come in here for our baluster one and we just want to set our junction setback to six inches and then we'll apply that. And all that's saying is we want you to offset this six inches from any junction that you have. And so you can see how now your spacing's in here properly. So that allows you to put the junctions in here. So it is important for you to have a junction set back on this object, just like this. So that way your spacing remains the same. So, and if you're only planning on doing something like this with a start and end point, it doesn't matter as much, but with something where there's actually a junction or a corner, you just need to set that spacing as well. So that's where I'm gonna end today's video. Um, leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Are you using Profile Builder? Um, was this tutorial helpful for you? I love getting that feedback from you guys and uh, just wanna make sure these videos are helpful to you. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. Um, if you like this extension, I'll put a link below for you to download the 30 day free trial. So go ahead and download it and give it a try. So I do wanna note that I'm an affiliate for this extension. So if you do happen to buy it, um, if you like it and you happen to buy a copy of it, then uh, I will receive a small commission. Um, if you like the show, that's a great way to support the show. But in any case, go give it a try. The trial's free. I think you're really going to like it. Um, but in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.